Voter apathy, need for electoral reform. The worst illiterate is the political illiterate. He has nothing, sees nothing, takes no part in political life. He doesn't seem to know what the cost of living, the price of beans, of flour, of rent, of medicine, all depend on political decisions. He even prides himself on his political ignorance, stick out his chest, and says he hates politics. He doesn't know how, he doesn't know the imbecile that from his non-participation comes the prostitute, the abandoned child, the robber, and the worst of all, corrupt officials, the lackeys of exploitative multinational corporations. Those were the words of Bertolt Brecht, a German poet and playwright. We have a serious case of voter apathy in Nigeria, which impacts the quality of leaders that we have as a nation. A visit to any house of assembly will convince you. A study of voters' participation in governorship elections in Lagos State, in respect of the two major political parties, PDP and APC, or ACN as they were, the highest level of participation at elections was at 24%. Lagos has a population of 22 million, and only 6.5 million people are registered. That is 29% of the population, where more than 65% of the population are within the voting age. In 2019, only 900,000 plus, which is about 14%, voted for Governor Sonwo Olu and Mr. Jimmy Agbaje. Also, at the 2019 presidential election, the vote for the two major political party was about 26 million out of 85 million registered voters, representing 13%. <laughs> we have a rulership of the minority. It has been argued that a major cause of voter party is that people are losing confidence in the electoral system. They believe their votes do not count. I would argue differently. So what is the way forward? We need INEC to continue conducting the registration of voters. And they should make the process less difficult. We collect driver's license. As many political parties who meet registration requirements should be allowed to participate in our political process in order to expand the democratic space. It doesn't have to be PDP and APC all the time. The registration of political party by INEC should not be limited to winning elections as we currently have it. Political parties should be allowed to grow organically. And the parties who fail to meet their registration requirement can be deregistered through court and not at the pleasure of INEC whose leadership is appointed by the ruling party. INEC should be more involved in primary election to ensure internal party democracy and compliance with the law, which is basically lacking currently. INEC should be mandated to adopt e collation of results to securely transmit results from all polling units to a central database, such that only viewing access is allowed at different collation levels. Electronic version of voters' registrars and results should be admissible in court to enable ease of post-election litigations. Disqualification of people facing criminal charges should be encouraged. Elective office is a position of trust. When people are elected into executive offices, they become immune from prosecution. They become appointed of the attorney generals who is meant to prosecute them, and those are the people that will be in charge of the evidence that will be used against them. Prosecution of electoral offenders by special electoral offenses court. That's my personal view. We should improve the security of elections and use technology more. We need to win back the trust of the voters to ensure more robust participation. It was the former French president, Charles de Gaulle, that said, politics is too serious a matter to be left to the politicians alone. We need to participate. So maybe let me uh, start by asking you, Francis, how many cases of electoral uh, malpractice or crimes have been uh, pros prosecuted to a conclusion in Nigeria? Uh, yes, a couple. But at least recently, we have conviction of a professor who was a returning officer and another conviction I can't remember probably vividly now. So the, the, it is not being taken seriously. Because, you know, we have the courts that are overloaded. 
So you then take collectoral offenses to those courts, and then you are not able to track, to, 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 to track them such that whatever happens to the cases, you don't know whether they have been settled or whether the cases have been struck out, whether the persons have been convicted. But at least recently, we have two convictions that are public uh, uh, notice. So, so if we have a special court where once you commit uh, electoral offenses, you're taken there, the prosecution is paid up, and then we get the decision within time. Now, it is even fair for the person who has been prosecuted at, uh, at all, in order for him to know his fate, whether he's going to go to jail, is going to go free. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. You said a lot of things about the way forward. Yes. I want to look at some of the reasons for the voter apathy. There are just two things I want to touch briefly. And one you mentioned slightly, which is the issue of voter education. A lot of persons don't believe they have a business with politics. You see, the average businessman thinks politics is not my issue. Yes. But they should understand that politics affects our life generally. Yes. For instance, I'm a public relations specialist. But why am I so interested in politics? Because I understand that one erratic or one wrong policy or legislation can frustrate years of strategy, yes. thereby reducing PR efforts to crisis management. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I'm interested in politics. And secondly, the other problem of religion. You look at the South, you discover that voter apathy is more in Southern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the religious mindset that politics is a dirty game. And I keep saying, if politics is a dirty game, let us become the detergents. <laughs> Very interesting discussions. Uh, I have to say that Mr. Francis had already mentioned quite a number. And, uh, but the addition I have here is the fact that we must find a way to make politics less interesting, less uh, uh, the benefits of politics or the proceeds of politics you know, less enticing. I think if we do that in this our country, Nigeria, a lot of people are into politics because of money. So if we make it less enticing, people who really want to serve, who are dedicated to serving, we join politics. They will do this. And you will find out that all these people who are there for the money, who are brought in corruption into politics, they will fizzle out in no time. Thank you. Well, if I may uh, add one, one thing, in the School of Management, when, they, when, when we talk of a SWOT analysis, now in Nigeria, one of the biggest threats, environmental threats for business is inconsistent government policies. And that just says it all. If you're going to be in business in Nigeria, you need to be interested in politics. You need to be interested in who is, in who is leading you, because that is... Uh, that is what will determine whether someone will wake up one day and say, okay, no more Okada. Yeah. Well, we'll say that. Mm. Uh, and and <laughs> businessmen in Britain were caught pant down when they were not interested in the outcome of Brexit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of Brexit, yeah. And, and, yeah. and business outside Britain now is not expensive. Some have to close shop. Yeah. Imagine the cost of getting permits for your staff in Europe. Mm. Yeah. So you, we, we all have to be, the fact that we are sitting here is by political decision or indecision, action, action or inaction of some people. Yeah. If they say we should not speak, we, we will not speak. speak. They said, so, so, they said so, last so, year we should not So, so, so for, 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 for people who think their votes don't count, their votes count. If you look at the stress that politicians go through to make sure people come to the poll, they pay them money. There was one in the kitty, they said, Tekako Sebe. That means when you vote, you cook. A pot mm. of soup. Mm. It was between 5,000 and 10,000, depending on your ability to negotiate. Yeah. There was another time when that was not possible. It was said that some politicians went into people's home asking them to swear by Ogun, the God of Fire, on Yoruba land. Mm. That you will vote for them after collecting their money. Mm -hmm. So politicians are really making serious efforts to get people to the polls. If your votes don't count, they won't go through all of that stress. They yeah. will just declare the figures. Well, I think it's um, the point has been made. It's, 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 um, we need to see this that the political decisions, political decisions are driving every aspect of our lives, and for that reason alone, I think we need to overcome this whole voter apathy. The advocate is always better with your participation, because of course, we did this for you. It's now time to share some of your viewpoints on issues discussed here. Emu Owobete, please forgive my pronunciation, says, don't forget Kinsley. 
They strongly deprived young people to vote with well-planned violence. It is not easy. Life is precious. And Yolanda Kersey, forgive my pronunciation, says, my favorite show on Plus TV Africa. I just love the discussions and the robust debates on the show. Sending love from South Africa. Thank you for always participating. And don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. Or on Twitter and Instagram, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate NG. After the break, Samson wants, to, wants us to see the growth or lack of growth in Nigeria he met as a child and in Nigeria of today. Stay with us. <laughs> 